shall we? Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I invite you to have your way in me. Take me and break me. Shake me and make me. Fill me and spill me. Change me and rearrange me. But whatever you do, Lord, this morning, don't leave me the same. Spirit of wisdom and revelation, I welcome your work in me. Open my eyes that I can see and my ears so that I can hear. I choose truth this morning over comfort. I choose challenge over complacency. Lord, make me forever yours. And most of all this morning, make us like you. So let me ask you this question this morning. Whose side are you on? Whose side are you on? There is a battle going on within each one of us every single day. Whether we see it or not. There are advances going forward and then there are some of those retreats. Right? There's a battle being fought for our affection and our devotion. For control and dominion of our very lives. We must learn to engage in that battle or we risk losing everything. And we risk more than we probably know. For we are either tender towards the things of God or we are resistant towards his plans and his purpose for our lives. There is a tug of war going on between our flesh, that flesh woman that gets in the way, and our spirit. And this requires a daily choice to surrender to God or choose things our own way. You may not see the battle going on, but I bet you you feel it. You feel it every time there's something that you want to do and you shouldn't do that. You feel it. It's in your mind and it's in your heart. It's decided by your words and by your choices that you make every day. There is a battle going on and we alone choose who's going to win that battle. Amen? So let's, if you would, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And I'm going to read this out of the NLT version. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, and the new has come. So how many of us can say yes and amen to that promise? Right? We can say that to that yes to that verse, but then reality is there, and there is a struggle. This struggle would be or is a whole lot more of the old going on in our lives instead of the new. That's a reality to me sometimes. May not recognize it all the time, but really there's more of a struggle of that old me, that old nature, that flesh woman. You know, some of we were talking at rehearsal on uh, Tuesday night, and we tried to come up with a name, and we decided her name is Gertrude, in my life anyway, okay? That flesh woman that struggles and always tries to get her way. How many of us have felt a lot of guilt and condemnation 
over this very verse when we think about it and contemplate, is there new going on in my life? Or am I still just responding and doing the same old things I used to do? Or react the same old way? So let me encourage you this morning with that thought that we are not alone. We're not the only ones that struggle that struggle, that battle, that tug of war. In Romans, you want to go there, Romans chapter 7, verses 15 through 23, we're going to see that Paul, the one who wrote the majority of the New Testament, had the same struggle. And this, for a long time, had been one of my favorite verses because you see Paul and this struggle and this going back and forth and back and forth, and you can really, I could really relate to it. So I'm going to read this, Romans chapter 7, 15 through 23, and it says, this is the New Living Translation. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. But... It is, but I know that what I am doing is wrong. This shows that I agree that the law is good. So I am not the one doing wrong, and this is key, if you underline, underline this part. It is sin living in me that does it. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. Hmm. I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. And here's this, this passage, this piece here again. It is sin living in me that doesn't. Now, I have discovered that there's a principle in life here. That when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power that we see at work in this verse. A power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me, and you, makes all of us a slave to sin. A slave to the sin that is still in us. So let's take a moment. Let's unpack these verses. Because if you read this, it's kind of like... <sighs> so let's unpack what this has to say. What's really going on in the verses that Paul is writing here? And why do we have such a struggle that goes on and on and on in us? It comes down to this reality. We are a three-part being. Now, I know that you've probably heard this at one time or another, that we are a three-part being. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it says this, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there it is. There's the verse that talks about us being a three-part being. So the first part, your spirit. If you were to look at a target, it might help you to visualize what this is. That very center part, that bullseye, that center piece, that's your spirit. And this is the part where God dwells. Right? This is the part that died. At the fall. Now, you remember the story of Adam and Eve, right? God told them not to eat of that forbidden fruit. The fruit from this tree, they weren't supposed to eat it. We know that Satan tricked, tricked them and, and they did eat. Now, when God told them not to eat it, he told them that in the day that you eat it, you'll surely die. Well, when they ate it, nothing really seemed to happen, right? They didn't really die. They didn't fall over dead physically. But something really did happen. They recognized that they were naked. And because they were naked, they were afraid 
and they hid. Their spirit died at that moment. The glory of God that had surrounded them was gone. No longer did they have that presence because that presence, that relationship was broken. It died because they were disobedient. Now, at that moment, that's that part, that spirit that died, that inner being of us. That is the part that when the scripture says that you will be made new, that's the part that comes alive again because Christ comes in, right? We're made new. We're made alive in Christ. Now, the second part of that three-part being is our soul. Now, the soul, this is our mind, our will, and our emotions. This is where we reason out. Is that a good thing to do or not? It's where we make our choices. This is where we live, right here, right now. That's the soul part that's going on. And then there's our body. Thing that we try to make look good and paint it and make sure everything's just right, right? Our body, the shell where our spirit and our soul lives. That's the part that, um, you know, we see every single day. Now, a writer wrote this, and I thought it was interesting. My body is the part that you see when you look at me. My soul is the part you talk to when you talk to me. And my spirit, well, that is the part that God communes best with when he communes with me. So when we choose to follow Christ, he rules and reigns in our spirit. But there's that matter of our soul and our body that we have to deal with. That's the kingdom. Those are two real kingdoms that are going on. Remember, we're in a battle, a war, a tug of war for dominion over what's going on in us. Those kingdoms still need to be given over to Christ, to his dominion. So as we were reading in Romans chapter 7, right, there are other forces at work, and this is interesting. Two times, Paul said, in those verses that we read, what? That it was not him who did the sin, but it was sin. It was, it was not him who did wrong, but it was the sin that was in him. Now, really, I mean, that, I'm the one who did that, right? I'm the one who went out, but no, get this. 44 or 45 times. Paul uses the word sin. 44 of those times, he uses it in a noun form. Like it's an entity, a separate being, an active, living thing, separate. Now when I think of sin, I think of a verb, something that I do. Right? Paul refers to it as a noun. Something outside, living, active, an entity that's within us. Here, when we look at this, it's the sin that's working within us that is so important for us to remember because if we do not have a tendency to believe that the sin is something else, we, I believe, when I do sin, it's me. I'm the one who's doing the sin. But it's actually something that's living, active, trying, battling for dominion. We believe that we are our sin. And therefore, every time we fail, it's because of me. And that I would never have victory over sin. Do you kind of think that every once in a while? But when we realize that sin is an active entity, something that is going on, it's I don't have to cooperate with that, right? Sin, I don't have to cooperate with the sin that lives in me. Because remember, I have a choice 
to agree with that, to choose to do that thing that we, I know is sin, or I choose not to do it. So I don't have to cooperate with that idea. So let's go back to Romans chapter 7. We're going to look at 24 and 25. Because I know every one of you, including myself, has cried the same cry or made the same statement. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? And do you see that part? I would underline it, exclamation, circle it. Thank God. The answer is what? The answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So when we choose to follow Christ, he sets us free. He sets us free from the law of sin and death. No longer are we bound by those fleshly winds, and no longer do we have to be captive by our fleshly bidding. Gertrude no longer has to reign in my being. That flesh of ours doesn't have to do that. And Romans 8, 12 says this. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have, now this is awesome. I don't. I, this is the. Uh, this is out of the NLT. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, get your pen ready. You have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. We have no obligation. We may think we do. We may think that yes, I have to go do that thing. Yes, I really have to say this thought. We have no obligation. We've been set free. So here's the problem. Though Jesus has made us alive in our spirits, there is, in our spirits, there still is a war that is going on in the members of our bodies. In Romans 7.23, that's what it tells us. There's still this battle going on back and forth. And this is why there's such a tug of war going on. What's, now, this never happens to any of you, I'm sure. Well, I'm going to tell on myself again, okay? Because, see, I can dress it up and become this beautiful church woman, right? I'm the pastor's wife. I've got it all together. I paint it up really nice, put the lipstick on it, right? Make sure the hair is just... Wait, is there one more spot that I have to... You know, you turn around and look in the mirror and back and say, is it all in the right spot? Get it all beautiful. Well, good morning. How are you this morning? Right? None of us. I know none of you do that. That's, that's what I do, right? So here's the thing. This is where that tug of war is. When somebody crosses us, crosses me, doesn't do what I think they should do or how it should be done. Or dare they say anything about my children. Or my husband.
she says to me, oh, no, 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 that woman, she needs to know exactly, exactly what she did wrong. And you're the one to tell her? Oh, man. Guilt from the past and regret from the shame and all of that, you know, the, the guilt and the, the shame, they attack me when I'm in that place, right? But guess what the Spirit of God says to us? Oh, Tia, you're forgiven. Yeah. Move on. That's right. Get out of that. And my flesh, well, Gertrude, she has something to say about that, too. She says, just give up. You're never, never going to change. Why even try? Why even try? I am pulled and I am tugged in all sorts of different directions. I'm worn over. There's a battle and war going on. And, and I can simply, I can, I can agree with Paul. I don't know if you've ever you know, been in that place. But I can agree with Paul and I can say, what a wretched woman I am. But we are saints. Every single one of us have been set free this morning. There's still that battle going on inside of us, but we have been set free this morning. There's promise in this message. This is not just, okay, let's give up. Well, we might as well eat that cake. <laughs> might as well just say it, you know, because, you know, that's just who I am. Doesn't matter. Just say it anyway, because then I'll feel better. No, don't give in. We have been set free, and there is promise here. We can say yes and amen all, not just some of them, all your promises are yes and amen for us this morning. So the promise in Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says this. Now get your pen out. Now I, I write in mine, okay? It's got all sorts of goodies, all sorts of circles and underlines and highlights in it sticky notes and stuff like this. Underline this. Through Jesus, there is therefore, what? No condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation. You do not need to be condemned for your past. Amen. You have been set free. There is now for no condemnation in Christ Jesus. If that don't light your fire, your wood's wet. You know? I mean, come on! That's good news this morning. We have been set free. Yes. Do you feel it this morning? Yes. We have been set free. But here's the thing. Although God has done this amazing work, and it truly is amazing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, right? I've been set free, my chains are gone. He's done that work for us. But here's the deal. I, we, still have to cooperate with him. Yes. I've got to decide which side I'm going to be on. There are choices that each one of us do have to make. Every single day, every hour, every minute of every single day, there are choices that we have to make. So 
How do we make these choices? I mean, that would be the next logical thing. If I'm going to do this, if I'm going to choose to be on God's side, on the side of the Spirit, then how do I make these choices? Because that's where the deal always comes up, right? I make the choice. I have the New Year's resolutions, right, ladies? Right? I make these New Year's resolutions, and I say, I am going to diet. I am going to exercise. I am going to read my Bible every single day, and I am going to pray. And that lasts for how long? A day. <laughs> Thank you. Right? Maybe, maybe if I'm good a week. And then Gertrude says, you're never going to change. Why are you trying? Give up. So how do we make these choices? How do we live to the spirit rather than live to the flesh? If I give in to my flesh, give in to its constant whims and demands, and I'm just going to sit and do nothing and look at the television. That could be a show, and that could be a show, and that home decorating is show. And if I make those choices, if I sit and do nothing and give in to the whims of Gertrude, because y'all know I love to do that kind of stuff, right? I love to watch food, cooking, and how, right? I mean, that's, that's how I like, right? So if I get into those whims, then I'm going to continue to follow my flesh, Gertrude. If I continue to be controlled by greed and the have it now lust, because we all have plastic, right? Yeah. And that works. We don't want to wait for nothing. Fast food, minute rice, instant mashed potatoes. <laughs> we don't want to wait, right? Have it now. The flesh only gains strength. If that's what we do, if we give in to all those things, the flesh is going to gain strength. And if the flesh is gaining strength, then my spirit is losing power with that strength, right? God's power is still omnipotent, right? God hasn't lost his power. He's still able to do for us. But I can quench the spirit. It tells us that. You can quench the Holy Spirit, the power that it resides in us. We can quench the spirit by choosing not to listen, by choosing to do what we want, instead of what he's wanting us to do. So as a result, our spirit begins to defeat, be defeated, and no longer will we have that power to fight. And we don't understand why we continue to struggle. I didn't understand why I continued to struggle over the same sin over and over Perfect example. Now, let's, I, I'm really telling on myself now. Last night, okay, remember I told you that I was really busy, right? Got the kids bathed and in bed, and I'm sitting down to write my notes. 9 o'clock at night. So I'm sitting on the couch with a computer sitting in my lap, and I'm doing this and trying to read this and trying to do that and put it here and put it there. And finally, I get up and I go to the kitchen table, and I put the computer on the table, and I continue to write, right? 11.45. Done. Okay. Now I need to sit down at the piano. <laughs> and I sat down at the piano to try to figure out which key we were going to sing it in. Are we going to do this one? Are we not going to? And this has got such good words, and it really goes along with what I'm missing. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Honey, you know it's 1 o'clock. Yes, I know it is 1 o'clock. Being a loving husband. 
husband, and he was trying to remind me <laughs> trying to remind me that I needed to go to bed. Yeah. And two o'clock rolls around, and that's what I'm <laughs> Okay, so Gertrude, even 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 having this, she still. Which side are you going to be on? Which side are you going to choose? 
Are you going to live to the flesh and give in to all of its cravings? Are you going to live to the spirit? So let me simplify it here. Whenever I demand my will, I'm feeding my flesh. And whenever I choose to do God's will, I'm going to live and feed my spirit. We choose. Can I say that again? We choose. And that, my brothers and sisters, is good news. We choose. I, we, are not obligated to be led around by our sin, to do its bidding, to be chained to its desires. We don't have to. I am not helpless this morning, and neither are you. And we're not hopeless. Sin's power has been broken. And I, we, are no longer chained to our flesh, that lower nature. But guess what? We got to realize it this morning, and that's the key. When I pray, no longer am I going to choose comfort and complacency. That's what we have to do. No longer. Choose complacency. We've got to act and live like we have been set free. Because we have. It's been paid for. The battle is over. It's been won. Now we have to choose to live like it. So, Again, let me be honest. It's easy for me to allow flesh woman, Gertrude, to get in there because if any of you know anything about computers, there's always a default, right? There's a default system that goes on and if it's just not working right, push the button and what does it do? It goes back to where it's supposed to be, right? Push the button. Guess what? What are you trying to tell me? <laughs> and I go back to that default, that sinful nature that's in me. That's in, and I know you do it too, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're not alone. That default, that pattern, and it's easy to slip back into it, right? We tend to make those choices, those fleshly choices that make us feel comfortable. You know, we talk about comfort food, and I know about comfort food. We go to it because it's comfortable. It makes us feel good. Some people spend money because it makes them feel good. It's comfortable. We go back into that. When we uh, tend to do that, remember that it's our choice to live to the flesh. Or it's our choice to live to the spirit. And that choice is daily, hour by hour, minute by minute. So Galatians 5.25, this is my last one. I usually go 45 minutes, you know, or an hour. So here we go. Galatians 5, 25 says this. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. If we will focus our hearts solely on Him, right? If we turn our eyes and our face and choose and decide to follow Jesus, guess what's happening? What's back here? If I'm going this way and I, and I choose to follow him, I'm feeding my flesh. 
or my spirit. And I'm denying my flesh. So if we keep in step with the spirit, we will become what he has meant us to be. And what is that? Set free. So let me say this. We will not experience, we probably won't experience complete freedom and victory over the flesh here on earth. But, and this is it, you know, buts and ands and all those, but we will experience measurable victory yeah. right here and right now if we focus on Jesus. We focus on him. We will have measurable victory. Oh, we are not going to be completely set free from our fleshly influences until we get to heaven, right? That new body, new heaven, new earth. But here is the promise. Here is the victory. Jesus came to set us free from that dominion. He set us free from that dominion, and here it is again. We have no obligation to give in. We have no obligation to follow the flesh anymore. Brothers and sisters, we are set free this morning. Romans 6.11 says this. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. So three, count yourself dead mm -hmm. to sin so that you can be alive to Christ. So are you ready? I am. Are you ready to kick your flesh? Mm -hmm. To the curb? Get Gertrude out of the bus, man. I don't want her around anymore. Get rid of her, right? To say that you are not, we are not going to give in. To say to the flesh, you are not going to rule over and control me any longer. I am going to come under the rule and reign of Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's bow our heads.
I want to I want to kick Gertrude to the curb. I want to listen to that flesh any longer. I want to be like Jesus in this world. I know it's Mother's Day, but this is a good day today for all of us to say yes. I want to be more like Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All yeah. people. Yes, we all want to change for His glory. Father, we thank you for everyone that's standing right now, God. We're saying together as a church family that we no longer want to be submissive to our flesh, but be submissive to the Holy Spirit that leads and guides us to all truth. So, Father, today, each one of us confess. Go ahead, take a moment. Whatever you need to get rid of, ask the Lord to get rid of it. <coughs> if it's anger or self-will or whatever it is, Father, just take it away in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for cleaning us by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for taking my fleshly person and I'm no longer going to submit to that person. So submit my life to the will of God. Father, thank you this morning for this word. I pray, God, it changes each one of us. As we continue to celebrate Mother's Day, God, I pray that we remember the new birth that took place when we said yes for the very first time. Hallelujah. Father, as you continue to change us through Jesus, I pray that each one of us today would look more and more like him. Father, we thank you for the change in our lives. Hallelujah. We thank you for the change in our church family. We thank you for the change in our city. Father God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' precious and amazing name, and everyone said, Amen. 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 God bless you and happy Mother's Day. And uh, we just love you guys so much. Thank you.